structures. Everything that's been built on the could argue is some kind of structure. We're going to look at the main ones and I'm going to teach you how to build and test a structure to destruction to see how strong it is. Small structures, big structures, man-made structures, natural structures, shell structures, frame structures. Our job is to understand structures so that we can build really strong and stable ones that can span gaps, carry heavy things and also protect stuff. Right, here's a quick quiz for you. I know we haven't discussed these in any detail, but you should be able to work out the answers. So pause it now. When you've had a go, unpause it and I'll go over the answers. Right, the answers are coming up. Number one, the bike helmet is actually a shell structure. Number two, its purpose is to protect, to protect somebody's skull. Number three, the Blackpool Tower is a frame structure because it's built up of separate pieces. And number four, the pictures, the first one is a cable stayed bridge in the south of France. That's actually a man-made structure. Uh, the second one is actually the skeleton of a dinosaur. And that is obviously a natural structure. And thirdly, the tree is also a natural structure. We can't possibly learn all there is to know about structures in a short video like this, but what we can do is learn how to design, build and test a bridge to destruction because you can learn so much about structures by doing that. But first, some basics about different types of bridge. Bridges have probably been around for as long as mankind and it's thought that the early ones were trees that have fallen or been put across the river or big stepping stones that people have put into the river to walk across. One of the earliest types of arch bridge is the Arcadico Bridge in Greece and this dates back over 3,000 years and is still in use today. A very common type of bridge that's widely used all over the place is a beam bridge. This is supported at each end. One of the beauties of this type of bridge is that it's very, very simple. But a disadvantage is that you're limited by the distance you can have between the supports without the bridge breaking and collapsing in the middle. It's widely thought that the Romans were hugely responsible for big steps forward in bridge design. This photograph of the Alcantara Bridge in Spain was taken over a hundred years ago. The bridge was originally built by the Romans almost 2,000 years ago. Now this photograph doesn't show the original because it has been rebuilt a few times since but it is based on the original design. And here's a more recent photograph of the bridge. Arch bridges did become quite common. Here's another example, it's called the Ribblehead Viaduct and it's in North Yorkshire on the Settle to Carlisle railway line. A key requirement for arch bridges is that the supports can be close together. But this isn't always possible and the type of bridge that you build often depends on the gap that you need to span and what's underneath. I didn't used to think that I had a favourite bridge, but I do and it's this one. It's the Clifton Suspension Bridge, which is just outside Bristol. At the time it was built in the 19th century, it was one of the very first modern day suspension bridges. Because of the length of the gap that it had to span and its height above the water, it would not have been possible to use other bridge designs that were around at the time. The reason that this type of bridge can span such large gaps is due to the design of the cables and the chains. On a suspension bridge, the road surface or deck is supported by thick metal cables that run vertically. And these vertical metal cables are attached to thick metal chains and all of this stops the bridge from collapsing in the middle. Due to the fact that the thick metal chains are anchored securely into the ground at each side of the bridge. Another example of a suspension bridge is the Humber Bridge which is in East Yorkshire. This amazing feat of engineering was opened in 1981 and as you can see it connects the north side of the river to the south side saving people from having to drive for miles. Look at the incredible distance that this bridge design allows you to have between those two supports. 
Anyway, onto the bridge that you're going to design. You're going to make something called a truss bridge. Now, as you can see, a truss basically refers to several parts being joined together to make a frame. And usually it involves triangles because these create really strong structures. On the example that you can see, the truss is above the deck that you walk or drive across. And what the truss does is it makes the whole of the structure stronger so that when something heavy goes across the bridge, it doesn't sag or even worse, break in the middle. Just look at these strips of MDF that haven't got a truss and look how they sag when the weight's put on. I'm actually applying the weight by hanging a bucket from the strips of MDF and progressively putting weights in. As you can see, I don't have to put much in before it breaks. And you can get different kinds of truss bridge. You can get a through truss, which is where the truss is above the deck, and a deck truss, where it is below the deck. Furthermore, as you can see from this picture, there are different designs for truss, but I strongly recommend that you stick to something that's relatively simple and you must do one that is above the deck, not below. Have a look at the plates that are there to reinforce each part of the truss. These are a really important feature and something that you'll include in your bridge as well. So here's a truss bridge that's already been built and let's hope that it fares better than the pieces of MDF that went across the stools before. But before we test it to destruction, we're going to weigh it because we'll need this later on to perform a calculation. And as you can see, it weighs 132 grams. The pieces of MDF from earlier broke after about three and a half kilograms were applied. I'd like you to make a prediction about how much weight this bridge will be able to hold before it breaks, bearing in mind that it only weighs 132 grams. So let's put it across the stools, hang the bucket from it and put it to the test. So when I weighed the bucket, at the point at which the bridge broke, it had 22 and a half kilograms in, which is an awful lot for a bridge that only weighs 132 grams. To help us understand just how amazing that little bridge is, we first of all have to understand something called strength to weight ratio. It's all well and good having a really strong structure, but if it weighs tons and tons, then we've not really made effective use of our materials. So here we are, we've got two very similar bridges, bridge A that holds 20 kilograms and bridge B that holds 25 kilograms. Which is the stronger of the two? Obviously it's bridge B because it holds five kilograms more. But if I was to ask you which is the better of those two structures, well, we can't really answer that at the moment because there's not quite enough information. But if I now tell you that bridge A only weighs 100 grams, whereas bridge B weighs 250 grams, that's a whole different situation because we've now got enough information to do some calculations. But before we do, just pause for a second and reflect on which one you think is the better structure and why. Strength to weight ratio equals weight held divided by own weight. So for bridge A, it's 20,000 grams divided by 100 grams, and that comes out at 200. And that means it holds 200 times its own weight. Remember that we had to convert 20 kilograms into 20,000 grams so that we have the same units on the top and on the bottom. And when you do the same calculation for bridge B, you see that the strength to weight ratio equals 100. So what this means is that even though bridge B can hold more weight, 25 kilograms compared to 20 kilograms, bridge A is a better structure because it can hold 200 times its own weight as opposed to 100 times its own weight. Right, so going back to the bridge that we built and tested before, as you can see, it held an amazing 22 and a half kilograms. Now that is 22,500 grams. And when you calculate the strength to weight ratio, you can see that it comes out at 170. It held 
170 times its own weight before breaking. Right, so it's over to you now to see if you can build a bridge that's better than mine. The rules are it has to span a gap the same width as A3 paper. You can only use strips of MDF to build it along with card triangles to reinforce the corners. And you're gonna join it together using hot glue, but be careful because hot glue, the clues in the name, use a spare piece of wood to press it down so the glue doesn't splodge out and burn you. Other tips for you, do some research on good bridge design. Look at some examples of good truss bridges and also draw your design out on a piece of A3 paper full size first. Don't try and overcomplicate it. Something that's relatively simple but well built stands more chance of winning than something that's overly complicated that you struggle to finish. Structures can be shallow. Structures can be framed. Although they are different, their job is just the same. Their job is to protect things and carry heavy loads. Let's learn how to do this by making a bridge with a road. Yeah.